What's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Are you good? I hope you're good. I am great. Just finished soaking the Vandas. Giving them a check, make sure the koi didn't eat too much of their roots. Hopefully not any. There's one, one day, the day my dog, uh, I think to the vet, he had that comb put on. I ended up forgetting about these amongst the chaos of having to rush him to the vet because he was bleeding everywhere. Uh, then I accidentally left these soaking for a good 30 hours, maybe 24. And the koi got to a few of the root tips because they were in there for so long. But so far, no more. I've been making sure to always give them their breakfast too before I get going. And now I get to go through and pull all these leaves out. Yeah, okay, I think that's good. Just uploading the video on the hernias, the hernia zebrina, the lifesaver plant. I don't know how much plant stuff I have to do today, but I have to run errands. Thanksgiving is in a uh, few days, and I need to go to the grocery store before the chaos sets in. I'm sure it's already chaotic. I really don't want to go. But, uh, yeah, so, but I'll try to make sure that there's some plant stuff in this video. Hopefully. I mean... We'll see. I'm gonna do my best. It wouldn't be a day of running errands if I didn't go to Lowe's. I mean, I basically live here at this point. I need welt proof or welt stop or whatever anti-transpirant they have, if they have it. I'm having trouble finding it. The bottle I had is from 2013, so I decided I should go ahead and get a new one, but I can't find it anywhere, so I may have to order it off of Amazon and get it shipped quickly if it's not here. Okay, so big surprise, Lowe's did not have any anti-transpirant. That's okay. Uh, actually, it's the next day. So I just kind of fell off the wagon with vlogging a little bit. But uh, I did manage to get down to my local nursery and pick up some no welt. So that's going to work. Went to the grocery store, got a bunch of stuff done. I will catch y'all up on that in a minute. So this is what I ended up getting. Well, stop. Uh, somebody asked me, I think Barefoot Gardener asked me if I have a preference for the anti-transpirant I use. I don't. I Well, stop is fine. The There's a product called Anti-Stress 2000 that one of my nursery sells as an anti-transpirant, and I... I'm not crazy about that one just because of its viscosity. It, I don't think it sticks quite as well to the plant. But wilt stop, wilt proof, the freeze proof is pretty good. Doesn't really matter as long as it sticks to the plants. Now I can't put it down yet, or spray it I should say, because it's best to do it when temperatures are in the 50s. But in a couple days I'll be able to do that. I couldn't vlog most of what I was doing today because it all has to do with future videos. But here's a peek. That's it. That's all you get. But uh, yesterday I went through and I started picking up all the leaves, which sucked. I hate doing that. But I'm glad it's done, kinda. It's really windy today. I just got home and like all my palm trees and things are blown over, which is okay. They'll be all right. They're fine, but it's blowing more leaves around. So we'll go look at that and maybe have a glimpse at some of the other things I picked up. Clean. I mean, mostly. You can see what the wind has done over here. Very windy. Not the end of the world. Yeah. Well, it's okay. They're warmer by the ground. It's pretty chilly today. It was in the 60s yesterday. Today it's in the 30s. We've been doing the freeze-thaw, freeze-thaw thing like crazy. So I'm hopeful that on Friday it's supposed to be pretty warm. I'm going to be able to spray the anti-transpirants on everything because looking at the leaves, I can tell things are getting a little bit dried out from these cold winds. Cold, very dry, dry, dry winds. Super humid here during the summer, and winter it is bone dry. The air, we get some precipitation, a little bit of snow, some ice, but that's why I need to keep these guys sprayed. Probably be doing a whole separate video on that. But these guys, I have a policy with my palm trees. If it's windy and they blow over, I leave them over till the, that's front has moved through and they're not going to get blown over anymore because it's bad on the heart of the plant. It can bruise. It's like the center. It's the center vein that runs through everything that leads all the way up to the spear leaf. And if that bruises, you can end up losing your plant. So if they blow over and it's windy, I kind of just leave them. 
and I picked up this beautiful rose here. It's a Hellebora. Aren't they pretty, though? This one's called Pink Frost, I think? Yes. So pretty. This is an early spring, late winter bloomer. So I'm excited about that one. And then I got some other guys here. You know, things are very slim pickings at the nurseries. These are the only little cypress I was able to pick up, and they all have a little bit of burn on them. They marked them down a little bit, which was nice, but doing some planters with these that'll be out later. Started to deconstruct this whole area and set it up for winter. I actually think I'm going to end up leaving the hollies in there permanently, uh, but I haven't fully made up my mind on that. But I like the way that's looking. I need to... The trellises are a mess. I know the wind just <laughs> destroyed those. I just kind of have things set up in a mock way. I have some pansies I'm going to put over the front. I would prefer like a nice variegated English ivy. I actually really wanted uh, variegated hollies, but I just I couldn't find them in a nice size that were affordable. I found one nursery that had some that were close to this size, but they wanted like 150 bucks a pop for them, which is nuts, especially this time of year. I picked up these two on clearance for $20 a piece, marked down from marked down from $59.95. So that that's a much better deal. And they're pretty. They got the berries. The birds like the berries. This. I shouldn't even be talking about this. I'll be getting to that in a separate video. And it's looking like these guys are about ready to be put to rest for winter time. The spot, frozen solid. Which isn't great, but it's okay. I mean, these Saracenias are extremely hardy. Main thing is keeping them from drying out and being eaten. So, that's also an up... Man, I have a lot of videos I need to get on. And this week is going to be light on videos. So, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Some hardy cactus here. This one showed up squishy. I don't know what that's all about, but it's been here for about a month. I was waiting for it to farm up and start looking nice to do a video on these guys, but I don't think it's going to. Uh, these aren't going to be planted yet. I'm going to be doing that cactus garden in the spring, so I'm just going to be holding on to them. Until then, I'm going to keep them. Probably going to keep them outside, but sheltered from precipitation, and uh, they should be okay. Fingers crossed. Oh, but yeah, look, no leaves. I mean, there's some leaves because it's windy, but that was fun. It actually was kind of fun. I enjoy using the leaf blower. Just not so much the part where you actually have to pick the leaves up. I hate that part. I always feel so gross afterwards. Uh, this Chinese fan palm, looking good. It seems to like this corner. I'm very surprised at how green this still is. But the one that's in the ground over here is still very green also. Oh, you guys want to see something kind of cool? Now, it's dying. But, do you see this? You know what that is, or what that was? That is a Kalakaja Thai Giant. I did not plant that there. I had one here two years ago. This little guy popped up last year too, and I thought, oh, it must have just been a seed that stayed warm. But it came back again this year and got a little bit bigger. I mean, it's very shaded from this Chinese fan palm. But what's that all about? Is there a section of hardy root down there? Do you think there's just a huge cluster of seeds that are surviving year after year? Because that, this little thing, there's no way that this flowered and put out seed. So I'm very curious about that. I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it next year. I'm going to remember this and fertilize to get it to grow and see what that's all about. But this, this little chunk of whatever's going on there seems to be more hardy than the other varieties because it's survived my zone six winters here three years in a row. But not exactly growing into an impressive plant, so how much that matters, I don't know. I just think it's kind of cool. Now, I picked up some really cool pots today for some future videos. These I got from my grocery store, my market, in the floral department. And this was only like four fifty or 5 bucks, I think, and then there were two little ones that were $3 a piece. It's like, that's a great deal. They're metal, and they have a plastic liner in them, so I assume that means that they're probably very prone to rust, so I need to... Be careful about that. I need to poke a hole in the bottom, but I like it. It's kind of gingerbready, sort of. It's, it doesn't really match silver, but that's okay. That'll be explained in the video. The, these don't need to match with what I'm doing, but like that's kind of cool, especially for five bucks. I'll take it. I went ahead and I repotted my Schlumbergara in here. This is a Christmas cactus. I'm sure you all know. Very, very nice, common plant. Uh, I went ahead and I just kind of tossed it in here. I threw some holes in the bottom of the pot. I literally just took a nail and hammer and just whoop, whoop, popped them right in there. Let's see. See? I actually probably should have thrown a few more in there. But this is blooming wonderfully. I thought I had planted three different plants in here. I thought I had a white, a red, and a kind of a pinkish colored one. 
But all I'm seeing is white and red. And it's possible that maybe the pink hasn't opened yet. It might be in the back. If it's just white and red, that's going to look kind of dumb. But, I mean, it's still pretty. Very holiday-like. Uh, I went ahead and I amended the soil with more sand and perlite because it's really not draining as well as it should be. So, hopefully that's going to be okay. There's some desiccation up there. I've had this guy for a pretty long time. I need to get in here and clean up all the debris from when it was outside. I also think I'm going to go ahead and put some DE powder around here just because I did notice a little millipede crawling around and, you know, succulents and cactus and mealybugs and I'm always struggling with mealybugs so I'm going to put the DE powder in there which isn't going to get the mealybugs off the foliage but, you know, they lay their eggs generally largely in the soil down here on the base of everything and then as the eggs hatch and the little larvae come out then hopefully the DE powder will just annihilate them. Hopefully, because I'm sprays and systemics aren't working for me anymore. I've run out of options. I've tried so many different things. I don't know, guys. I've been doing some research. I found an organic product that's made for hydroponics. I'm going to give a shot here in a while. But for now, the DE powder is mostly preventative to keep offspring from going crazy. Isn't she looking pretty? It'd be prettier if there were three different colors in there, but it's okay. Yeah, this is nice. This is festive, right? Festive? It's so festive! I know festive. I can do things. Let's finish chopping up two pounds of broccoli. Look at all that goodness. Gonna roast this up and make a casserole. And about to have some happy doggies. There you go. And I'm gonna wash my hands. Uh oh. Here. You can have all that. A drizzle of olive oil, and in you go. So I got this guy done and cooling. Made some Rice crispy Treats, Christmas colored, but they didn't have Thanksgiving color. Now let's make some cookies. I baked. I'm a baker. Now, I should probably use two pans, but I don't care. I'm over this. It'll be fine. No matter what, they're gonna come out tasting like cookies. Hey guys, it's me, Liddy. About to make some pie. Yep, using a can. No way am I messing with that crap where you take the pumpkin and roast it up. Not for me. Absolutely not. No way. Get out of there. That was a sloppy crack. Ew. Ew. And the final bit of ew. What do you think, pumpkin? What are you doing? You be my helper? Are you a good sous chef? Yes, you are. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of do some of this. And then, boom, pie. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Got some potatoes in the oven. I'm making breakfast. It's the next day. When my amaryllis popped open. Looking very pretty. But, uh, Sherry Baby, still my favorite of the window. All of our treats we made yesterday. Looking good. I'm not really into sweets, so I probably won't touch these, but... Rice Krispie treats made with French vanilla marshmallows. Made those with cinnamon and vanilla and really gross sugar cookies right there. But that's not what y'all are here for. So I've already been out here, got the humidifier up and running, soaking the orchids, gave the koi their breakfast. I've learned I need to feed them heavily before I soak the orchids or else they try to eat the orchids. So that's not great, but... They're being okay. I've been doing some light pruning in here. I'm trying to kind of open this up because I would like air to move through. Because I'm always battling the mealybugs, and the mealybugs like darker areas, so I'm hoping to kind of concentrate the mealybugs into a specific area if possible, which I know isn't really possible, but hopefully I can draw them to a darker area and then just eradicate them. But I know that's not how it works, but I'm just hopeful. And the orchids are on the other side of here, so I would just, I want airflow going through there. 
And it got really cold in here last night. I always turn off one of the heaters at nighttime uh, for a variety of reasons. This one, it keeps turning off on its own, so I think there might be something wrong with it. Uh, so for safety reasons, I make sure to shut it off at night just to be safe. And I don't mind, I actually prefer for there to be a temperature shift between day and night. Because that's more natural to the plants and helps stimulate them to behave more naturally. I know behavior isn't necessarily a term we use with plants, but hormones are real and they're influenced by a variety of different things, you know. So I like there to be some kind of shift. But it, it dropped to 63 in here last night, which is, that's not going to hurt anything that's in here, but that takes a lot of time and electricity to heat things back up to where they need to be. Which I don't fully understand, it got down to 34 outside last night, but the night prior to that it was 26, and it didn't get that cold. I don't know what that's about, but uh, no big deal, things are heating up. Oh, and Justicia Carnia got a bloom. Very pretty bubblegum pink bloom. One of my favorites. Okay, I guess I have to get back to cooking. It's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving! I cooked. These water bottles represent when you've run out of to give. Alright, dinner's ready, but before I can eat, I'm gonna pull these up. I already pulled these up and down. I gave them a second soaking because it got up to 80 degrees finally, so... I went ahead, gave them another drink just because, uh gotten up to 80 degrees out here, but the humidity is still below 50%, so I went ahead and gave them another soak, just because if it's going to be nice and warm, they may as well... Ah, this is getting really heavy. Okay, so like I was saying, it got nice and warm in here, but the humidity is low, so I went ahead and gave them another soak. Clearly, there's root pruning to be done. Not that big of a deal. Now I'm gonna go do the whole Thanksgiving thing. And dinner's done. I forgot to mention, I cleaned. If you watch the vlogs, this was just a catastrophe the last few weeks, but this is now open again. There's still people, even they're juggling around. But doing some pruning. That stuff over here you're still not supposed to see. I uh, had somebody ask me to do a video with more details on overwintering the heliconias, which I've actually wanted to do, but there's there's a problem with that. And the problem is that I do not have a 100% surefire method for overwintering them. Every year is a trial. Some years they do great, some years they don't. So uh, I can't offer anything definitive on how to care for them. The main thing I can tell you is to keep them warm, keep them watered, give them a lot of light, and watch out for mealybugs. Because mealybugs absolutely love the heliconias. And that's why I have my heliconias. I mean, they'll travel, this doesn't matter, but it's better than having them, like, just meshed up in there. So, uh, that's really the best advice I can give you. Uh, like I said, every year's hit or miss for me. Usually these right here, the two tall ones, the Hirsutas, Heliconia Hirsuta, these are Costa Flores, that's their variety. They do okay for a few weeks, and then they kind of wither away, which is what's happening right now. And then they tend to go dormant for several weeks, and sometimes I'll put them on a heat pad, wake them up, and get them growing again. That has worked the best for me. So that's kind of the best tip I can give you. If... If my, my wheels start turning and I can come up with something, uh, I, I, I will try and do a video with more details there, but that really is the main point, is warmth, humidity, and water and light. Airflow is important as well. Anytime you want humidity to be high, you also want airflow or else you get fungal issues and whatnot. But they're tricky. There are lots of varieties. Over here... Larger heliconia. I believe this variety is called like Latisifa. Latisifa? Don't know how to pronounce it. They have cool, big, torch shaped flowers. They don't bloom as profu. They do not bloom as profusely as the hirsutas or the Cedarcorums, but uh, they are much less fussy when it comes to overwintering. They don't mind the cool temperatures quite as much. So. You can see this one's doing really well. A few yellowing leaves, but they're low, old leaves. And there's lots of new growth coming up. And there's a bunch of new growth coming up from the bottom. So, this is a variety I would probably recommend for 
indoor use if you have to keep them inside for some part of the year. This one has been doing great for me for a few years. This is a good one. These guys are more fussy, but they're still more hardy than a lot of the other varieties I've tried. And that was Tree Rehab, who asked me to give more detail on overwintering the heliconias. Up here, thank you so much. I'm in zone 8A, 8B. I have to start wrapping my outdoor palms. Uh huh. Do you leave your boutia outdoors? No, I actually don't have a pure boutia, but I have my mule palms. I did leave my boot. I had a boutia that I left out for several years, and then uh, an ice storm got it one year, so I don't really mess with that anymore. I feel like there's something important that I forgot to respond to. Oh, um, I've mentioned my cat and people want to see more of her. And I told you that she has her own channel, it's PumpkinButt777, and I did go ahead and upload a new video to that, which I haven't done in several months. But that's up there if you want to see it, it's just me playing with my cat, nothing very exciting. Huge aquarium in your home, would love to see more cleaning and caring routine, think about getting back into it. Uh, I did already respond to this. Uh, the So here's the thing with the fish tank. I have had multiple requests to do videos on my aquariums and my pets in general, and I really just haven't jumped onto that bandwagon quite yet, because it's a whole other realm of YouTube, and uh, I don't have a big freshwater tank right now. I have two very large saltwater tanks and a few smaller freshwater tanks. And I had mentioned in the past my freshwater, or no, my saltwater tanks, I really don't have many fish in them because I no longer buy saltwater fish unless they have been seized by the owner to a pet store because maybe they moved or perhaps the fish outgrew their fish tank. But I just kind of started feeling bad taking fish out of the ocean. There are exceptions to that. And I'm not shaming anybody for doing it. It was just me personally. I just got... I started feeling bad about it, and uh, also my tank crashed a few years ago, and prior to that, I had several fish, some tangs that I had had since I was a child. I had a purple tang that was nearly 17 years old, so I was pretty heartbroken over that, and uh, so uh, I just kind of stopped messing with them. I still maintain them. I am thinking about having... I am thinking about getting around to doing some very drastic changes with my tanks. I might convert one of them back into fresh water because I really miss having a decent sized fresh water tank. It's only 110 gallons, which isn't huge, but it's big enough to do more with than what I'm dealing with right now. So if I do that, then I will get into maybe doing like something brief. I don't know. We'll see. But if you're looking for good YouTube content when it comes to fish care, Rachel O'Leary is amazing. Solid Gold Aquatics, that's uh, Jenny Link's Solid Gold Aquatics on YouTube. They're fantastic. Taylor Nicole Dean, wonderful. And then uh, you can also search the King of DIY, Joey. I think his name is Joey Mullins, I'm not sure. But uh, if you type in the King of DIY or DIY Aquariums, anything of that sort, you will find Joey on YouTube. He's major. And, I mean, they have everything. I, I can't, I don't think that I have anything to add to what they're doing. Because they've, they've already touched on so many wonderful things. But Judy did go on to basically say that it would just be nice to have a closer view and chat about my aquarium setup and daily routines. Maybe I will do that when I get the ball rolling again with those tanks. Sometime in the next several weeks. So, not a bad suggestion. I love fish. I've been doing fish stuff my whole life. I was originally a marine biology major, and then math happened, and nope, 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 nope. Was not for me. Oh, and Rose had asked me to do a time lapse of cleaning up the leaves. I didn't do it. I'm sorry, Rose. Takes too long. Just didn't have time this week. And she had asked why it takes so long. Uh, when I edited videos on my phone, it went very quick. When I switched over to my computer and got a new camera, it started taking longer partially just because I do a lot of heavy editing and every single cut that's made has to be rendered so that it just takes a long time. And I sometimes film in 4K, which takes longer. I don't do that very often anymore. So that's that's a big part of it. And really the amount of time it takes for the videos to export and upload isn't atrocious. I've talked to other people who are on YouTube who have far more subscribers than I do and make some really great content. And they, they all pretty much have the same situation. And, like, here's this week's vlog so far. It's only at 20 minutes. It's going to be more like 30 at this point. But 
I haven't really done anything yet. I just kind of watched it through to see what I need to do. But I will often go through here and make tons and tons of cuts, cut out unnecessary stuff. I adjust lighting. I spend a really large amount of time adjusting audio. And all of those little things, every single change you make has to be rendered. So that's why it takes a long time. It turned out the reason it went really fast for me, I was talking about how fast this new software is. In a video I did a while ago, it only went fast because apparently the video was exporting in 480p, which is just useless. It was blurry and <laughs> as I'm out of focus. And I ended up having to redo those videos and re-upload them. So that's what's going on with that. Alright, but I actually think that's going to have to do it because I'm trying to keep these a little bit shorter. This is probably going to be like 30 minutes, so that is not exactly short, but I'm trying. You know, it's a whole week's worth of stuff. It, it takes a while. As it is, I think I'm at about 23 gigs or so that I need to narrow down and edit through, so I actually kind of enjoy that, so I'm not complaining. That's fun. But I hope everybody who celebrated the holiday had a good time. Hopefully everything went wonderfully. Snapchat had some fun filters today. I actually got on Snapchat and played around with it. I'll put a little thing right now. Are you ready? Happy Thanksgiving. Wasn't that fantastic? You're welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share the video, comment down below. I really love talking to y'all. You can follow me on Snapchat, Trop Plant Party, Instagram, Tropical Plant Party, and Twitter is Tropical Plant JC. I use Twitter more than anything else. And I hope everybody's doing well. Keep on growing. Bye bye. <laughs>